I'm a doctoral intern. Uh, I am completing my PhD in counseling psychology and school psychology from Florida State. And in my last year of school here, I am working at the CTC, the Counseling and Testing Center, and working with college students. Um, worked with college students quite a bit in the past, and so I, I've really enjoyed um, this year so far, even though it has been in many ways stressful, right? We are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, perhaps you felt it, uh, perhaps you've seen it in, in those around you. So we're gonna talk about what stress is tonight. We're going to talk about what are some ways to manage that stress. Um, this is in no way an exhaustive uh, presentation. In fact, it's gonna be very short just to give you some quick tips and some quick things um, and some resources at the end because this may not answer all your questions uh, and you may have, you may have more. Um, there might be some space at the end too if you have questions that I, can answer, uh, but I will at least just launch into my presentation and, and we'll go from there. So let's talk a little bit first of all about stress. What is it? What's going on when you're experiencing stress? Stress is normal. Stress is something that we all as human beings experience. It, it's all about how our bodies react um, to change, to things that um, whether we there's a perceived threat or a real threat, um, what do we do when we're asked to do something to perform? Let's say maybe take a test, for instance. Um, and when we are asked to do that, usually we feel tense, right? We start noticing um, some nervousness, feeling maybe a little bit anxious. And we know that we have this situation that asks for a response. We have to respond in some way. Um, this usually happens automatically. It's not like we sit down and say, okay, I wanna feel nervous about this. It just happens, right? Um, it's your body's way of responding to uh, fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, it's, you know, it's a natural way that your body is kind of wired to deal with um, an intense situation. So you've probably noticed this before. And, um, you know, stress is, is a natural thing. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, your heart rate increases. Your blood starts pumping through your body, right? You feel that adrenaline. Your muscles tighten up. Um, and so, so stress itself is, is a good thing. Um, it's a good thing in, in, in small amounts, and we'll talk more about that. Um, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is that um, the, the, there was a survey that was done, and it's just shown that the stress of college students has increased tremendously since the pandemic. Um, I read one survey in which 71% of students reported that their stress and anxiety levels had increased during the pandemic, okay? So if you just thought, hey, maybe it's just me, there's plenty of other students out there who are feeling stressed and, and more stressed than they did before the pandemic came. Less than half of those participants also indicated that they were uh, able to cope adequately with the stress. So not only are they feeling more stress, but gosh, how do I deal with this? I don't know that I have the tools. I don't know that I have some of those coping strategies um, to deal with the stress in the way that I in the way that I want. So stress, as we mentioned before, it's a good thing in smaller quantities, right? Uh, this human function curve shows a little bit about stress, and you know it can be helpful, right? It can give you that adrenaline you need to face a test or to perform in a sporting event or to right to to respond. But after a while depending on the intensity of the stressor, depending on you know, the time, uh, the duration of the stressor, uh, it can be exhausting. It can lead to fatigue, it can lead to exhaustion, and, and eventually a breakdown or burnout, right? And then you've gotten to a point where you just can't really function. You can't really do the things that you wanna do. So um, a little bit about stress over time, it's helpful to just see that, hey, stress, in and of itself is natural, it's gonna happen. And there may be a time in which it, it, it's, it's hurtful. It gets to a point where you're not able to do some of the things that you've been able to do before. So what are stressors? Stressors are things in our environment that we're responding to. We're feeling stressed or under pressure, right? Um, going to work could be a stressor for you. Uh, and it's not the same for everyone. Everyone has different stressors in their lives. Um, but, you know, catching, you know, the cold or catching COVID, 
might be a stressor, right? That's a real one that a lot of people are, are certainly concerned about. So, you know, think about what are those things for me? Um, what are those things that I'm feeling stress about? Sometimes it's just helpful to kind of start making that list and identifying what's there, what is it that I'm experiencing? What are those things that actually are stressful? This stress equation, I think, is a helpful way of, of kind of That, you know, it's simple, right? It's a visual of the different parts of what add up to the stress that you may be um, perceiving. So the stressors, as I mentioned, are those things that you're experiencing in your environment. And those stressors you're experiencing or how intense they are, right? You may have a test that you're not really worried about. In one subject, you may have a test in math or statistics, for instance, that you're pretty concerned about. I know the, uh, the stats tests were ones I always was, was a little concerned about. Um, the length of the stressor, right? You know, we're approaching with the pandemic. We're, you know, we haven't quite hit a year, but we're, we've been experiencing this stressor for quite a while, right? And that takes a toll on, on everyone who's experiencing that. So the stressors themselves are important to take a look at in this equation. The other thing that's important that and helpful to look at is what is that perceived threat? What is what is the demand of this stressor? Um, the degree of that threat. Again, like I said, the test may be easy, it may be hard, um, but what is, what is it that I actually perceive here? Is it a life and death situation? Is it um, something that I might feel embarrassed about, right? There's different levels of threat. There's different levels of um, focus that that stressor may, may involve. And then the last part of the equation is really looking at your coping abilities. How do you cope, right? What, what can you do to actually deal with the stressor? Is there something you can do to deal with the stressor? So that's a, that's a big question. Is this something I can actually control? Is this something that I can actually, do I have some abilities to address the stress that I'm feeling around this particular issue? So what we're gonna talk about now, since we've kind of given an overview of stress, of what it is, um, we've talked a little bit about you know, good stress and bad stress. We've talked a little bit about this stress equation. We're going to briefly hit these three boxes and ways in which we might start managing that stress. Um, as I said at the start of this presentation, this is no way exhaustive of everything you can do, right? There's lots of different strategies out there, but these might be some helpful hints, some helpful clues as to, you know, what is, yeah, what's bothering you and what you might be able to start doing about it. So let's start by looking at the stressors, right? What are the current stressors in your life? So I'd encourage you, you know, sit down and make a list, write it out. It always helps me to, to get it out of my head and get it on paper to visualize what are those things that I'm dealing with? Um, some of you may be surprised. Maybe there's more stressors than uh, you originally thought. Um, but anything that you're you're seeing some kind of threat or some kind of demand in your life that's taking something from you, you know, as far as, you know, attention and effort, those might be things that you list out. The first question when you start this list is, okay, is there anything you can get rid of, right? Can you avoid one? Can you eliminate one? Um, some things you can't, right? Like right now, we can't necessarily eliminate COVID. There are things we can do to maybe reduce exposure, to COVID, right? Washing your hands, social distancing, wearing masks, things like that. But there's some things we can and can't control. But if there's something you can do to eliminate that stressor from your life, I'd encourage you to think about it. So one of the things I, I did this season, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm lived in Florida the last few years and I didn't have to worry about snow, right? So snow, driving in the snow for me is a stressor. That's something that I'm not used to. I'm scared to do. And so one of the ways I dealt with that, I was like, you know what, rather than drive to work some days, I'm going to just walk. And that relieves that stressor from my mind. Um, I'm able to just take my time. I don't have to worry about ice. You know, I feel good about the boots I have, right? And the things that I can walk in the snow and ice on. And so I'd rather do that and just have one less thing to worry about. So Think about what that is for you. Think about if there's anything you can do to actually cut back on the stressors in your life. Are you taking on all the projects 
for all the things that are going on in work, maybe rather than say yes to everything, you start saying no to some things. And I'd encourage you to start thinking about that. The other thing, reducing exposure, right? So maybe you can't eliminate it altogether. Maybe you shouldn't. But are there things you can do to, to get less of it? You know, one of the things I, I have done myself and I've encouraged students to do, maybe don't watch the news all the time, right? The news is stressful. Uh, 2020, as we know, was a, was a stressful year in a lot of ways, a lot of different things going on. And hey, we need to be in the know of what's going on. And it also, you know, if we're spending a lot of time watching it, it could be, could be harmful. It could you know, be more stressful um, if we're not taking some breaks from the news. So that's an example uh, that, I, that I often use with students. Hey, take a break, take, a, take some time so that you're not, um, you're not feeling as stressed. You know, organizing for a big test, you know, not waiting to the last minute would be another example. So think about little things you can do to reduce the stress that you're gonna feel. The second box that we, that we talked about was reducing the perceived threat or the demand. Um, what can you do and what are you saying to yourself about a stressful situation? So a lot of it may be your perspective. You know, you know for example, some students I've heard say, hey, with a pandemic, there's nothing to do, right? And there certainly have been some reduction of activities that we normally have been able to do in the past, absolutely. You know, but I, you know, when I sat there and I kind of thought about it, I, I challenged them a little bit. Nothing is a very strong word, right? Is there, a, is there actually nothing you can do? Maybe you can't do all the things you want, but there still are things that the student identified and the student was able to do. Um, so what are those things that, you know, you can do to start kind of tr changing that mindset? You know, is, is something quite the same catastrophe as you've maybe built it up in your mind? Is there, are there things you can start saying to yourself instead, you know, rather than something being unattainable? Is it actually attainable? You know, and what do you need to, to help achieve that task? This can be really hard to do, especially when you've been in maybe that mindset for a while. Um, maybe it's hard to see, you know, that there are other options. So if you're having a hard time with this, I'd encourage you to consider, you know, maybe talking to a therapist, somebody who can help you reframe some of these, some of these thoughts, um, because it, it can be challenging to do, to do on your own. But it's certainly something that uh, I've seen with students is effective. Is there another way of looking at this? Is there a different perspective? Um, some things are certainly going to be threatening and demanding. And what are different ways of looking at it to kind of work through some of those things? The third box um, is increasing those coping abilities. Um, what are those things that, that you've done? When are those times in the past when you've been successful in managing a stressful situation, right? I'd encourage you to think about that. Take some time, maybe journal about it. When, when did I have a really stressful experience in my life? And what did I do to get through that experience? What, what was helpful? What, you know, what did I say to myself? What kind of steps did I take, right? I'm sure you took, you have some skills, whatever they may be, and you applied those skills to manage something that's stressful, right? And then I'd ask you, hey, can you take those skills that you learned from that previous situation and can you apply them to the current situation you may be in? Um, you know, a lot of students have, an incredible amount of resilience, right? When you think about all the things that you've gone through in life. And so I would imagine that you have more skills in managing stress than maybe you've identified. And so I'd encourage you to take some time to really think through those skills. What, when have I done that? And how did I do that? Like really drill down until you come up with a list of skills. Um, again, that's something that sometimes it can be helpful to ask a friend to really help drill down and ask you, how did you do that? And how did you do that? And how did you do that? Until you really have a good, strong list of skills. And how can you use those skills in your current situation? One of the, one of the techniques I really like to, like to use um, that kind of gives me a confidence to get through something that's difficult, I call them dangling carrots, right? So I put these, you know, adventures or things that I really am looking forward to, 
like hiking or different things like that as, hey, when I get to the end of this, I'm going to reward myself. I'm going to treat myself. Um, and when I look back at all these trips or these different things that I've done, that can be helpful reminders of, you know what, I, I got through that really challenging experience. And yeah, that's a reminder that I can do it again. So um, learning techniques, learning new ways of maybe organizing your time, right? What are those little things you can do to kind of give you a boost in your confidence and in your ability to help you? Again, I, I recognize that, um, yeah, confidence levels might be low and, and that can be something to talk about. But I encourage you, you probably have more um, successful experiences than you might immediately recognize. So take some time, really think through it. Um, really just dig in to those experiences. That can be really helpful. I think it's also really important to look at our physical and emotional needs. Um, one of the first things that students mentioned um, to me is the first things to go with the pandemic was exercise. Um, a lot of students say, hey, yeah, I'm not exercising like I did, right? The gyms are shut down. Um, I, you know, it, and I get it, like the normal way of working out, right, may have changed for you. And there's a lot of science to show that um, 30 minutes of exercise a day increases serotonin levels. Um, that serotonin, right, helps you feel better. It gives you, you know, less, it's a less stressed mood, right? You're, you're calmer during the day. And then when that serotonin breaks down at night, it actually helps you sleep. So, you know, a lot of people are stressed and not able to sleep. So focusing on healthy sleep routines, right? When are you going to bed? When are you waking up? Um, are you staring at a screen right before you go to bed? Um, are, what are you doing to potentially, you know, are you drinking coffee late at night, right? These are simple things. And yet, um, I know we can get into this, right? Work, work, work mode as students and forget uh, that we need to give our bodies a break. We need to um, allow them to, to rest. And so diet is another one. A lot of people are loading up on carbs and those carbs are, are good, but in you know, unhealthy amounts can make us feel really you know, irritable and, and can definitely impact our mood. Um, social life, this is one that's been taking a huge hit with the pandemic. And so what are you doing? What are you doing to make sure that yeah, you're tired, but maybe you can squeeze in that Zoom call. You can do something to at least interact with another, another human being. Um, a lot of students work and spend all their time in the same room. And so getting out for a walk, right? Getting a breath of fresh air, those things are important. The other thing I encourage a lot of students in is deep breathing. Deep breathing reverses the effects that we talked about earlier, right? When your heart rate's um, spiking, when you're starting to feel anxious, um, when you feel your muscles constricting, deep breathing is helpful because you start getting oxygen into your bloodstream and you start to actually relax and you notice that your heart rate goes down and you're able to, to be calm and start thinking clearly again. So I highly recommend that. Um, and again, there are different exercises that, you know, I could show you or any therapist could show you as far as deep breathing and ways of relaxing. The great thing that I love about deep breathing is you can, in a, just a, a few breaths in less than 30 seconds, you can really substantially um, reduce the stress that you feel. So I encourage everybody, you know, take take deep breaths throughout the day, maybe, you know, once in the morning, once at, at lunch, and once, once again at night, and that can be really helpful. Uh, meditation, you know, some people prefer that, like that mindfulness activities. What are those things that can get you back into the present moment, right? When you're feeling stressed and anxious, you might be kind of projecting too far into the, for, into the future, right? Thinking about everything that might happen if this doesn't go the way you want. Take some time to remember the present. Remember today. What's, you know, what's going on with the sun, you know, the sunrise, watching the sunset, taking time to, you know, look outside, um, taking breaks in between class. Um, I found since I'm on Zoom all day and I've got seven or eight Zoom meetings in a row, 
I have to, I have to take some time off the screen, right? I have to look away. I have to, I have to do those things to kind of get centered again before I go into another call because the stress builds up. And if you're not doing anything to manage it, it's eventually going to come out. And sometimes it can come out in, in unhealthy ways. So I'd encourage you to think about some of those things you can do to, to start managing the physical and the emotional um, sides that stress impact. So I've flown through a lot of um, information and I wanted to provide you some resources. Um, I'll open it up to some questions here in just a minute. But one of the things I'm, I'm doing this um, year is let's talk. We're doing it through a, a Zoom remote format. But if you have questions about stress, about managing stress, this would be a great way to reach out, um, especially if you haven't already started um, therapy with a counseling and testing center. Um, I will be there and I'd be happy to talk to you about what's going on. You know, how are you managing stress? Maybe I can give you some techniques and some tips. Um, again, it's not a clinical session, but maybe there's some things that you can do to, to kind of add to what you're already doing and, and to help with that. So if you have questions about stress and you want to work with me more one-on-one, -on -one, that's a great option. The next one will be on February 8th and from 4.30 to 5.30 on Mondays. So happy to work with you on that. The other things that I recommend, there's a great link here, um, FACE COVID, which is an acronym. Um, each, each letter stands for a different technique and it comes from a, you know, acceptance and commitment therapy uh, framework. So some really good stuff in that link. I'm probably gonna do a similar type of presentation in February on, on some of those techniques. So check that out, um, that might be helpful as well. The other thing, if you know, if the stress is getting to a point where it's seriously impacting your functioning, um, you're having a really difficult time with friends or social, social life, or you're really having a difficult time with work and school, uh, and maybe you're not able to really manage it, you know, the Counseling and Testing Center is also a resource. So reach out, um, feel free to set up an appointment, and we're happy to work with you more on, on stress, you know, anxiety, any of those kind of things. So I've flown through a lot of information. I know I have gone quickly. Um, are there any questions, any comments that people have? And I'll go ahead and stop recording. So if anyone has any like personal questions they wanna throw into the, the discussion right now, uh, you can go ahead and ask those.